and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Holly Walsh and Ramesh Ranganathan, Rob Beckett, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round call if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Holly, which category would you like? Can we have home news? OK, home news it is. The answer is no. What? <laughs> what is that going to be about? Well, I have no right. idea what story this could possibly refer to. Uh, what is the question, Holly? Is it UKIP's immigration policy? <laughs> <laughs> is it do Man United have a defence? <laughs> Is it, how should you not answer the question, did you pack these bags yourself? <laughs> is it, what is the least uttered word in a porn film? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what did his friends call Nostradamus? <laughs> <laughs> is it, um, what type of oil painting is John Prescott? to the question, do you want to be in my gang, my gang, my gang? <laughs> <laughs> Is it can Tesco's financial director count? <laughs> if we could possibly now yeah. move yes. you towards a correct answer. Is it normal to take all your clothes off to have a poo? <laughs> <laughs> Is it would Dara look sensible in a Fiat Cinquecento. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, do I have a tiny willy? <laughs> Is it, once you're over 60, <gasps> should you trust a fart? <laughs> I do, I do Is need, it what if the Scottish people said in the referendum? It is exactly that, oh, thank you very much, Andy Parson. That's right, of course. The question I was looking for was, how did Scotland vote in last week's independence referendum? The vote, which had a remarkable turnout of nearly 85%, saw the No campaign win with 55.3% of the vote, compared to the Yes campaign's 447 What do you think swung it in the end, then? I think it's probably that more people voted No than Yes. <laughs> the level of analysis we're very proud of. <laughs> to Alex Salmond, it was, you know, a lot of people over 55 in Scotland voted no. Uh, in fact, both of them voted no. <laughs> the good thing about voting for an independent Scotland is once you put your X in a box, you can cut it out and use it as a little flag. <laughs> I thought it was quite lucky for Alex Salmond in some ways that he didn't actually win. Because I think if he had won, his grin might have been so big <laughs> that he might have eaten himself. <laughs> It was also swung, supposedly, by... There was a, there was a poll, wasn't there? There was one poll one which poll. put the yes ahead. And they think that was a rogue poll, didn't they? It was a YouGov poll that was 51-49. There would be one guy in the YouGov office who's had an awkward meeting <laughs> where they went, yeah. Terry, every poll, even the results, except your poll, Terry, who did you ask? <laughs> who did you ask? I love the phrase, rogue poll, because it sounds like an unwanted erection. <laughs> it actually sounds like a, a Daily Mail headline. I, I, I <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, rogue polls. Rogue, rogue polls have been ruining yeah. yeah. this country. Oh, they were yeah. in Scotland. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. It's so embarrassing for David Cameron, just like just after this poll came out, and suddenly he's like, "We'll give you loads of powers, honestly, and we'll give you cakes, and it's going to be amazing. Like, please stay. <laughs> we're really going to look after you. I promise. It's going to be incredible. We're going to have a theme park and a roller coaster <laughs> and whatever you want. <laughs> please stay, please." <laughs> and now they've tried to stay, and he's going. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I said a lot of things, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> what I didn't understand about the Scottish election thing was if the Scottish didn't want to be part of Great Britain, where were they going to live? <laughs> the big question which was asked on the night, and it was amazing how quickly it was asked, what was, the, what was the major question people were asking then on the night? It wasn't yes or no. No, it very quickly began, what does this mean for England? Like, ah, within yeah, ten yeah, minutes, yeah. Scotland was like, oh, hang on, we're still here, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back down to London and ask people what it means for England. Well, this is what I think it'll yeah. mean for England. Well, what do you think? Of? I think it means this for England. And Scotland only goes, ahem! Uh, <laughs> we've not even given you the results yet! <laughs> yeah, 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 we know the gist. The Welsh have been complaining, haven't they? And it's fair enough, it was always going to be, you know, the, the Scots got a parliament and the Welsh got an assembly. 
you know. So the Scottish had a proper parliament, and the Welsh, they just had a quick head count followed by singing Morning is Broken. <laughs> The Welsh are getting stroppy, actually. I was in Cardiff in Waterstones recently. I asked for Pride and Prejudice, and the bloke said, I'm proud to be Welsh and I hate the English. <laughs> <laughs> but you will never stop. So you get down to smaller and smaller areas, won't you, wanting power. There'll be referenda in smaller and smaller areas, and then you don't know how to... It's the question in the, in the referendum, I guess. We say in the North East, it would have... You couldn't have yes, no. It would have to be aye and no. <laughs> <laughs> in Essex, it would be all right and bollocks to that. <laughs> In Kensington and Chelsea, it would be, uh, no, and OMG, totes def over yard. <laughs> In other news, what has Prince Charles said is the largest challenge facing the world today? Is it narrow doorways and you get your ears caught? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's climate change. Yes, it's it? climate change rather yeah, it's than not the narrow the doorways. Thing. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. I thought it was ice buckets. It's not ice buckets, no, our ice buckets are the reason for climate change. No, but uh, they are this... one of the biggest challenges in the uh... <laughs> They are. <laughs> the they yeah. are. Every, everyone has to do it at some stage. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, Charles is worried, apparently, because it, in, we've only got another 30 years until climate change might be irreversible. And he's, he's therefore worried that it might ruin his coronation. <laughs> <laughs> This is Charles yesterday on what? the Royal Yacht, which is, is not uh, <laughs> uh, quite as impressive as it used to be. Yeah. Is this a summit in New York? Yes, he's at a summit in New York. China and India have not turned up to the summit, and they're like the worst ones for climate change, which is ridiculous. It's like Oscar Pistorius not going to an Oscar Pistorius trial, isn't it? And he's got the biggest carbon footprint going. <laughs> <laughs> Climate change, isn't it? It's like, I was in a garden yesterday. It's September. It's lovely. It's October soon. Sitting in the garden still. No? Do you not have gardens? Yeah. That is, that's weather. That's yeah, not that's... climate. <laughs> that is... yeah, yeah. Where does the weather come from? The climate. All I'm saying is, if it goes up a bit, you know, it's not that hot in Lewisham. It's nice to have a couple of extra degrees. <laughs> I'm glad you're having a nice day in the garden. Thank you. I'm sure there's a polar bear somewhere going, all right, this seems to be getting yeah. smaller, but at least, at well, least Lewisham is having a nice yeah. day. Yeah. So, yeah, we've had a rough few years. And I'm not going to bump into him anyway, am I? <laughs> I would love the ding dong, and you open your door and there's a polar bear and yeah. they're going, Rah! Yeah. Well, to be fair, luckily, because Holding of the... a tiny yeah. piece of ice yeah. under his arm. Because of the... <laughs> to be fair... My house! Because Rah! of the... Because of, because of the narrow doorways, you won't even be able to get in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the United Nations, uh, they're encouraging people to go vegetarian, aren't they? Because apparently yes. one, of, one of the big problems with climate change is uh, all these cows farting. So, <laughs> yeah, either we've got to eat less meat or we need to give the cows a bit of Pepti Bismol. <laughs> I understand that because, like, if the cow's farting is causing the problem, then surely eating them is the solution. I, I, I mean, I... <laughs> I don't know. You think we're eating cows as a way of saving, you know, we should walk quick, we're well, going to no, eat all the cows no, no, before they no, fart us into no, a climate change? No, 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 <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm speaking as a vegan, by the way, but. but, but... <laughs> <laughs> there is a logical disconnect here because, like, you know, you say that you know you don't want to, don't want to have all these animals that are farting, whatever. But there is this point we have to go. We'd have to just. What do we do? Just release them into the public? In the, in the unlikely, thing, the rest of us who aren't vegans suddenly go. Do you know what? No, I'm not going to yeah. that. No more, no more meat. We all go. No more beef. Yeah. There'll be another cattle farmers going. What am I supposed to do with this lot then? Yeah. <laughs> And you go, well, you just let them go. No. Let them go back into the wild where they belong. Feed them to the polar bears. First. <laughs> How is uh, Paul McCartney trying to help cut emissions? He's doing a creepy rap. We, we can show the creepy rap. They, uh, but I, I must warn you, once you've seen the creepy rap, you can't unsee. <laughs> uh, the creepy rap is one of those things. Actually, yeah. He's uh, I think for Meat Free Monday that he wants to do. So he did a recorded video and slipped into some unusual character uh, towards the end. This is Paul McCartney's Meat Free Monday rap. Please just log in, pledge.meatfreemondays, or one word, dot com. Pledge.meatfreemondays.com. 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 You can do it right now, please. 
Do you know what? I mean, I don't mind the rapping, but the impression of my dad at the end, which is... <laughs> I'm not sure about Meat Free Monday, you know, like, because when, I mean, again, speaking as a vegan, but, but my, my problem oh, with it is... Oh, God. Are you a vegan? Listen, get on board, all right? Jesus. You guys disgust me. Yes. <laughs> you cheese and meat-eating pricks. <laughs> uh, anyway, please, every part of the show, preface every topic we do with yeah. as a vegan. Uh, <laughs> If I may. Pizza. <laughs> oh, mate, pizza. I'll tell you what, pizza, nightmare, right? I, I, oh, she's when I the first main went vegan. I love pizza, ordered a pizza, right, with no cheese, right? No cheese. Yeah. What I didn't realise is not only does cheese add flavour, it also has an adhesive quality. What I got was a box of bread with some vegetables in the corner <laughs> of the box. So... <laughs> The end of that round, the point's going to Rama Taliani! <laughs> now we play a round called English Jokes for English People. This game <laughs> involves Ramesh and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is education. Who wants to come on that? <clears throat> well, um, as a vegan, um, <laughs> I, I, I had to. I wanted to supplement my son's education, so I'm helping him to to learn to read. That's one of the things that I, I, I'm doing, and, and helping your child to read is, is one of the most magical and rewarding things that you can do as a parent um, on day one. After that, it's one of the most frustrating, annoying, I'd rather punch myself in the face repeatedly than ever do this again activity that you can ever do. And let me tell you why. They do not care about making sense. <laughs> right? They'll just read all the easy words. When they get to one they don't know, instead of trying, they'll just look at the picture and just throw something random into the sentence without <laughs> any regard for what effect that has <laughs> on what they're saying. I'm supposed to not get angry. <laughs> I'm supposed to not get angry when my son goes, Jack went... strawberry? <laughs> How could that be what it said? How could it be Jack went strawberry? What are you talking about? <laughs> what would that even look like? How could that be what it said? Tell me. I tell you what, you think that's what it said, you go strawberry now. Go on. <laughs> okay, go strawberry. That's what you think it said. Stop crying, go strawberry. Go, go strawberry. Why don't you do it? Go kiwi then, I don't give a shit. <laughs> You're not doing it, are you? I tell you why not, because it doesn't make any bloody sense. <laughs> My wife thinks I'm overreacting. <laughs> Thank you very much, Robert. OK, that leaves us with Milton. So let's see what you've been up for, Milton. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is family. <laughs> My uncle, he was a cruel man. He knew we lived in a bungalow, yet every year for Christmas we always got a slinky. It's a miracle my sister's getting married. I went to the printers to get the invites, and he said, well, what, what typeface? I went... <laughs> she seems to like him. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather, during the war, he broke the Enigma code machine. <laughs> then he went AWOL. Well, it's not quite true. Then he became an owl. My grandmother, she's been talking about downsizing, and now she's in a little urn. <laughs> My other grandmother, she was a children's writer. Uh, you may have seen her book, Jack Goes Strawberry. <laughs> I haven't always been popular with my family uh, as a vegan. normally work. <laughs> 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 
Recently, my family all clubbed together and got me a voucher for a clinic in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, well done. Point that to Mr. Jones. Come on back in. Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what is going on here? Is it an advert for Match.com? <laughs> Literally anybody can find love. Yeah. <laughs> is that, every time I look in the mirror, I see a woman. Hmm. <laughs> is he saying, apart from the door frame and this coffee mug, is there super glue anywhere else? <laughs> The caption probably says, he wears blue twill non-iron with button-down collar. <laughs> she wears a look of <clears throat> exasperation. <laughs> uh, yes, that, that is his wife, Justine Thornton, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's his wife saying, uh, uh, if I get rid of the spider, will you go back in? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 don't joke. Don't joke. Yeah. It's spider season, <laughs> all right? Oh, there, there are some massive spiders knocking about. Do you know why there's so many spiders now? Do you know why, why there's so many... so many spiders? Because it's hot, because of climate change. That oh, you're so talking about. Oh, it nourishes. Oh, no! Yeah, oh, oh swings and roundabouts yeah, for the now, isn't it? <laughs> Like a Sydney oh, garden, but look at dum dum this huge spider coming down the garden, all eight legs. Ah, <laughs> ah. Is, he, is he saying in one hand I have a mug, and the other hand I'm using to do a little reshuffle? <laughs> Tragically, he's probably saying, "Well, I put seven o'clock on the invite. It's nearly midnight." <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, somebody tell me, tell me what it actually is. Is it, is it, um, so it's doing a Labour Party conference? Yeah, that's good it enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. You're absolutely right. Thank you very much. Well done. Thanks, that's good Labour conference. <laughs> of course. Yes, of course. It's a picture of Ed Miliband and his wife Justine Thornton, who were in Manchester this week for the Labour Party conference, giving his big speech on Tuesday afternoon. How is he doing? His current personal approval ratings are minus 46. <laughs> the only place they're lower is within his own family. <laughs> minus 46 sounds like a temperature in North Pole, which apparently is not cold enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're mistaken, because that's not climate change, mate. That's just the weather. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, it, oh, the thing about Miliband is not only what he says, it's just how he says it. And it's just, he's just, guys, guys. It sounds like he's just a sneeze away from talking properly. <laughs> it's like, guys, cos... Guys! Cos you think maybe, if he has that sneeze, he might be a really passionate, like, sp speaker, but like, guys, guys, shh, I swear down here, we're gonna cut the deficit, get our country <laughs> back. <laughs> Come on, I'm coming for you, bro, I'm from <laughs> Lima! <laughs> The problem is, that, that one, his speech, speeches are boring, aren't they? Let's be honest, political speeches are boring. Liven it up, stick him on a trampoline. Cos <laughs> I would watch it. The trampoline pan would only work yeah. if the camera was at, like, a height where he had to jump to get into shot. Yes! That <laughs> well, that's is it. a political speech. You have to go, I suggest! That's... <laughs> 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 government have let you... Are you are suggesting Cirque du Soleil take over or... All, all I'm saying is more people watch that than the speech. <laughs> all sorts of things would be more interesting on the trampoline. Sex would be better on the trampoline. What, with Ed Miller, man? No, not with <laughs> If you have sex no, on the trampoline... Put a Dave got in first. <laughs> uh, if you have sex on the trampoline and you can become a member of the ten-foot-high, no-foot-high, ten-foot-high, no-foot-high... <laughs> he's basically made it fun for the Tories, cos they could say anything they want. He's unelectable. So you can do whatever the hell you want, do you know what I mean? Like, we're gonna kill everyone. Yeah, but I'd rather that than vote Ed Miliband. <laughs> <laughs> so what changes does Ed Miliband propose to bring in about voting? Is it the 16-year-olds uh, can vote? Yes, absolutely, 16-year-olds. And 17-year-olds, because that would be really weird if you just had 16-year-olds <laughs> yeah. do. But then, what, you're 17? No, you can't. It's because you've gone hormonal again. I mean, you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. We don't know. <laughs> you don't know you have a gap year. Yeah, that'd be great, gap year for voting. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a they, tight one. Listen, all young people are going to have a gap year of about 40 years before they vote again anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it seems very fair that you should be able to vote at 16 in Scotland, because 16 a lot of places in Scotland, that counts as middle age, doesn't it? <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, I, at 16, I don't think I would have been trusting myself, because my question would have been, will there be girls there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't think there's girls. Yeah, Pole really? Babe Station. That could have been. Pole Babe Station. <laughs> girls there miming, <laughs> yeah. voting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can X my box. You can X my box. How about, how about giving three-year-olds the vote and still having one ballot box but four different shapes that they have to put in? <laughs> With work as well as the system we have now. What do Labour want public sector employees to have to declare? Their class. Their class, yes. Mm. Or their class. Is it which is it? Oh no. Uh, I'll <laughs> give myself away, haven't I? Uh, <laughs> the clue. The two ways I de definitely can find out if someone's working class in public sector jobs. One, put bingo pens in the stationery office. <laughs> if they go, you know they're in. <laughs> the other one is put on a coach trip. Because my aunties, they'll go to Syria if there's a rest stop and a tour guide. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> middle class people don't want to self-identify as middle class. They, uh, you know, people, middle people just want to be, where, you know, because it's more authentic. You know, where it's, you know, middle class is such a bland state of affairs. It's not bland. What is, is it? Have you, have, you, have you tasted some of their food? <laughs> what kind of flavours going on in there? <laughs> it's not bland being middle class. Have you mistaken middle class for Indian? <laughs> <laughs> The nan's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we call them nans. <laughs> uh, ate, you ate, we was in Birmingham the other week doing a gig and you had cream on top of your goulash. No, listen. <gasps> hey. Goulash. Goulash is. Yeah, it's meat yeah, it's yeah. nice in goulash. It, I, I'm not that much of an idiot. It was no, it's a <laughs> goulash. I could have a beef goulash, but hold the beef. <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I had a, an, an argument, a discussion about the fact that I thought it would. I thought it had combined so much with the goulash that it, it rendered the situation untenable. But Rob said, You could have screwed that out, mate. I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got it's not a vegan. It's eating cream over here. <laughs> 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 oh, we're such great mates. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a natural banter, which is why we put five people in between the two of you. <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, head to the round, Charlie and Andy. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear on a news programme. As I report from my sixth day here in war-torn Syria, I think the lesson learned is that I should never have called my producer a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> According to statistics, the French economy is now the weakest growing of all the economies in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Sport now, all Manchester United fans, please look away. <laughs> <laughs> You've reached Al Jazeera News, which means you're only 20 channels away from actually finding porn. <laughs> yeah, you'll never guess who's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just time now to see what the papers say. We will now attempt to talk to the survivors of the cliff fall. You're right, mate! <laughs> <laughs> After the fire in the aromatherapy candle factory, the situation is now calm. <laughs> And now over to our foreign correspondent. Do you speak <laughs> English? <laughs> now it's time for the news near you. Hello! <laughs> there are human remains on the bloodstained streets and the despair in the eyes of everyone you meet. Rob Beckett for BBC News, Magaluf. <laughs> there continues to be heavy shelling here. Ramesh Ranganathan at the peanut factory. <laughs> now it's over to our toys and games correspondent, Natasha Kaplunksky. <laughs> Uh, 
And eventually, the sun will go supernova, the Earth will become dark and frozen, and everyone will die. That was the long-range weather forecast. <laughs> Uh, to my right, uh, in my peripheral vision, Andy Parsons is showing us his penis. More on that as it unfolds. <laughs> <laughs> we go over now to our vegan correspondent. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, he appears to have gone strawberry. <laughs> And David Cameron has delivered on all his promises to the Scottish people. <laughs> <laughs> Just time for a quick look at tomorrow's papers. So the Times and the Telegraph lead with industrial strife. And in the sun, we can see that Caroline from Dagenham has got a terrific pair of norks. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a medical show. I'm sorry, I know nothing about the inner workings of the human body. Honestly, hand on my heart, it's... Uh... <laughs> I'm Dr Christian, and remember, however embarrassing your condition is, you'll never look as weird as I do. <laughs> Health officials have shut down the village fate. Apparently, there was an outbreak of tombola. <laughs> I think we've got the balance about right here. The hospital is clean, but the nurses are filthy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be starting the procedure by numbing your breasts. No, 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 Well, that really is an enormous growth, Mr Thomas. I think it might be better to leave it and remove you. <laughs> <laughs> um, please let me assure you, it's perfectly normal and the swelling will go down. Um, it's just that I find you really attractive. <laughs> If you've been affected by any of the issues on embarrassing bodies tonight, think how I feel. I had to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you'd like to bend over, I'm just going to check your prostate. Maybe slightly uncomfortable. I'm going in now. <laughs> Look, no hands. <laughs> Now, our next guest, believe it or not, is both a poo and a lice inspector. Sorry, police inspector. <laughs> <laughs> of course I know what I'm doing. Give me the defibrillator. I'm going to defrib something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm afraid it's the big C. Yep. Jeremy Hunt is paying the hospital a visit. <laughs> This week on Embarrassing Bodies, FIFA. <laughs> I'm afraid there's been a problem with your X-ray. He's put a sex tape of you up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> this is where obese people need to step up to the plate, step away from the plate. <laughs> So, I'm off to give blood, or as I like to call it, self-harm for a biscuit. <laughs> People say, give blood, give blood, but it really freaked the kids out on Christmas morning. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Bush Doctors, or as I call them, gynaecologists. <laughs> In just one week on a lad's holiday, Kevin got an SCD, had his stomach pumped and lost a finger. Legend! <laughs> 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 OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Ramesh, Holly and Andy! <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Rob Becker, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones.
Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Holly Walsh and Ronald Shanganathan. Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night.